Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, thank you all for your presence and hopefully your patience for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Today I am going to talk about a very interesting and uh, I must say a very challenging case in internal medicine, uh, respiratory sections. The way I am going to do it is I will give you history of the patient in the beginning and all you have to do is to thoroughly read the history correlate the finding in the history and give me a list of your differential diagnosis. After that, I will take you through the examination section. I will take you through the general physical exam as well as some of the systemic reviews. And you have to correlate the positive finding in the examination with the finding in the history and narrow your differential diagnosis accordingly. And the last, I will take you through the investigations of the patient including some radiologic investigations and at this stage you should be able to properly diagnose the patient. So without any further delay let's start off with the case history. So this was the case of a 30 year old lady who previously was labeled as asthmatic and now presented to us in the emergency department with progressive worsening dyspnea, chronic productive cough, fever, weight loss which was on off from the last two years. She was labeled as asthmatic two years ago, but over the first few months, she has to increase the use of inhaled bronchodilator to rescue her dyspnea. She was dyspneic even at rest, though she was denying any history of orthopnea or paradigmal nocturnal dyspnea. The cup was productive, a thick yellowish to greenish mucoperal and sputum, and she was giving history of hemoptysis several times. She has associated fever, unintentional weight loss, but denied any chest pain, palpitation, or night sweat. She denied any history of GERD, never smoked, there was no occupational exposure to any dust or fume, no contact history with TB and had no other significant medical history of note. Previously she was hospitalized for the same issue and in the last six months she was hospitalized two times for acute severe asthma. These were her medications. Her family history was not contributory to her current illness. She was married eight years ago, recently divorced living with parents having no kids. There was no documented allergy history to any drugs, though she was giving recurrent upper respiratory tract infection history throughout her childhood and her early adulthood. So what is your history based diagnosis? At this stage, I will recommend you to pause the video for a while, correlate the finding in the history and give me a list of your differential diagnosis. If possible, write it down in the comment section. So what do you think? What could be the possible differential diagnosis in this patient? Well, the patient was giving history of uh, exertion, a patient is giving history of uh, dyspnea, chronic productive cough, fever, hemoptysis, so on the top of the list should be bronchiectasis. But what do you think? What could cause bronchiectasis in this patient? What could be the underlying cause of bronchiectasis in this patient? If you think bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, you are in good shape, providing the patient is giving history of asthma and now presented with shortness of breath, hemoptysis and fever allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is a likely cause. What else? Charles strauss syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease, although very rare, but can occur in patients with asthma. In Charles strauss syndrome, the patient is giving history of asthma, there will be peripheral eosinophilia, plus there will be vasculitis involving many organs. 
hematoid serious syndrome yes the patient is giving history of recurrent upper and lower respiratory tract infections she is also giving history of infertility providing she has been married eight years ago but having no kids hematoid serious syndrome is very likely tuberculosis yes the patient is giving history of weight loss productive cough and that too for a very long long time especially in our setting tuberculosis can be a very likely cause so let's move to the examination section So these are the vitals of the patient. Pulse was 96, regular, respiratory rate by 26 per minute, temperature of 101 Fahrenheit, and her saturation was 84% on room air. But when she was back to back nebulized with Ventolin and after giving 4 liter per minute of oxygen, her saturation increased to 88%. General physical examination. She was a young lady of average belt with dark complexion, setting visibly desk neck with a respiratory rate of 26 per minute. Circulation, she was having two plus peripheral pulses. Extremity revealed grade 2 finger clubbing, but no cyanosis, chylonychia or edema. Head, ear, eye, nose and throat exam revealed normocephalic, atraumatic, no scleral actors. There was right tympanic membrane for formation with the roomy auditory meatus, but no discharge from here. Congested nasal mucosa with mild tenderness on the left maxillary sinus and congested throat. Trachea was central with, with equivocal space on either side. No gaiter mass or lymphadenopathy was noted. Systemically, auscultation of the chest revealed and expiratory wheezes throughout the lung field, and there were bilateral coarse inspiratory crackle in the lower lung zone. Cardiac auscultation revealed normal heart sound with no murmur, rubs, or gallops. Point of maximum impulse was noted to be on the right fifth intercostal space. She was well oriented in time, place, and person. No focal neurologic deficit was noted. Abdominal examination revealed soft, non tender abdomen with no vasomegaly. However, dullness was noted in the left hypochondria. So, what do you think? What are the positive findings in the examination? Right tympanic membrane perforation with roomy auditory meatus, right maxillary tenderness, PMI in the right fifth intercostal space, and dullness in the left hypochondrium are some of the positive findings in the examination. So now, correlate the positive finding in the examination with the finding in the history and narrow down your diagnosis accordingly. What do you think? What could be the possible diagnosis in this patient after examination? Well, immortal cilia syndrome was on our differential diagnosis list. The finding in the examination, like the PMI in the right fifth intercostal space, which means the patient is having dextrocardia. right maxillary tenderness which means the patient is also having sinusitis so sinusitis plus there was another finding in the examination like there was dullness in the left hypochondrium normally the dullness is on the right side the liver dullness it is actually the liver dullness which is on the right side but we have noted dullness in the left hypochondrium it means that the liver dullness is also possibly on the left side. So the patient is not only having dextrocardia, but she is possibly having situs inversus. So infertility in the history, 
recurrent upper and lower respiratory tract infection and on and in the examination uh, dextrocardia with possible cytosin versus so the patient is most likely having emotile cilia syndrome so these were the investigations and emergency treatment plan this was the initial treatment plan for the patient she was back to back nebulizers new nebulized with ventolin hydrocortisone injection was given stat continuous o2 inhalation 4 liter per minute via face mask and antibiotic to cover the typical and atypical uh, organism causing chest infection were given injection furosemide not hydrochlorothiazide actually furosemide 60 mg iv stat was given initial diagnostic plan so these were the diagnosis that were planned for the patient initially these include some basic lab investigations like cbc urea creatinine lfts chest x-ray plus esr was also done ecg sputum per mv plus gene expert and eco was planned so these were the result of the investigations complete blood count revealed neutropenic leukocytosis ASR was 35 so these were the complete blood profile which revealed neutropenic leukocytosis this was the ESR of the patient and you can see it was 35 basic metabolic panel was normal blood sugar was slightly in the pre diabetic range the rest of the basic metabolic panel was normal so these were the basic metabolic panel sputum per mv and gene expert no mycobacterium detected and gene expert was also negative this was the ecg of the patient so tell me what are the finding in this ecg strip if you can find it easy right axis deviation yes you can see that the complexes in the lead one is predominantly negative while in avf it is predominantly positive so there is right axis deviation can you trace avr normally the complexes in avr are negative but you can see that there is positive krs complex along with upright phi and t waves so there is positive complexes in avr what else poor rv progression in the precordial lead if you can appreciate yes there is poor rv progression in the precordial lead which is typical of dextrocardia also also you can see that the complexes and lead one are predominantly negative with down going krs and inverted phi and t wave which is also typical of dextrocardia so these are the finding suggestive of dextrocardia this was the chest x-ray of the patient and clearly you can see what's wrong in this chest x-ray the stomach bubble which is normally located on the left side has shifted toward the right side if you can appreciate it so this patient is having also cytosine versus along with dextrocardia the cardiac apex is also pointed toward the right so dextrocardia with cytosine versus is clearly visible on this x-ray echocardiography reveal dextrocardia with preserved lv systolic function no mr and tr documented so further diagnostic plant was uh, planned including ultrasound abdomen in order to uh, confirm the cytosine versus x-ray pns occipital mental view 
to look for sinusitis because the patient was having right maxillary tenderness. HRCT to confirm bronchiectasis and sputum CS in order to target it, in order to start targeted antibiotic therapy. So this was the X-ray PNS, and you can clearly see there is haziness on the left side. So there is left maxillary sinusitis. This was the HRCT. I'm sorry, I don't have any clear picture available of the HRCT, but you can see cystic dilatory changes on the airway in HRCT. Clearly, you can see here. So, general rule of thumb is in bronchiectasis, the sizable airway are larger than adjacent blood vessels. So this was the report, radiologic report of the HRCT, which stated that dextrocardia situs inverses along with bronchiectasis and bilateral basal, lingual and medial segment of the middle lobe. Keeping in view of the clinical history of infertility, a radiologic feature are suggestive of Cartagena syndrome. So this was the case of Cartagena syndrome. Ultrasound abdomen confirms situs inverses. So this patient was a case of Cartagena syndrome, which was named after after the the person who described it first, namely Vance Cartagena. Cartagena syndrome is characterized by emotile cilia syndrome, in which the ciliary beat frequency is abnormal. And as a result of that, mucus clearance is abnormal, which causes mucus plugging with subsequent recurrent upper and lower respiratory tract infections, which lead to sinusitis, bronchiectasis, infertility, and anything else, and everything else. So further treatment plan was implemented including ciproplexacin 0.4 gram IV OD to cover for pseudomonas. Pneumococcal NH influenza vaccination was done and chest physiotherapy was planned in order to clear up the mucus and the chest secretions.